Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. welcome. Thank you, Amber. Um, welcome to another Creative Conversation Facebook Live here in our Red Thread Cafe classroom, brought to you by our wonderful Intentional Creativity Museum. Mm -hmm. And I am Milagro Soriano Rivera, Intentional Creativity teacher, a guild member, co-curator for the museum, and your host today. And with me, I have my beloved sister and co host, guild member, and just beautiful being, Miss Amber Samaya Gold. Welcome, Amber. Hi. Hey, Milagros. It's so good to be together. And it's, you know, it's nice hearing this, like we're, we're weaving so many things together. And that's always what I think about when we're like, we're, the, we're in the guild and we're co-curators and we're in the museum together and we're in community together. And it just always feels so juicy when we- Always, always. So I'm really looking forward to our time together as we explore the theme today of celebration yeah. and community. Um, you know, 2021 has been an outstanding year for our community, for our museum, for all of the beautiful offerings. And we want to celebrate that. So we are definitely planning on just giving you a little taste of what's to come in our upcoming event. Yeah. So today, as many of you know, it is our year end or 2021 year end museum show celebration and a fundraiser for the Intentional Creativity Foundation. And the museum programming that you've been experiencing over the last year and a half, I guess almost two years, the exhibits, the projects, the museum shows, the art education seminars, all of the art calls, this has all been funded generously by the Intentional Creativity Foundation, which is the nonprofit that is actually operating the museum. And so we wanted to basically have a celebration show that is a retrospective of our year, just looking looking at everything we have accomplished and co-created and, and really made manifest um, through the museum with the support of the Intentional Creativity Foundation um, since the museum's inception and really have our community have the chance to share in that with us. So we invited you to come and to donate for a ticket or come as comp complimentary of a complimentary ticket option. And that is how we have created this opportunity for you to donate is to actually come and be a part of an event and have some fun. So that uh, is happening today at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And we are going to be sharing some links in the chat for anyone who is interested in attending our museum show celebration and fundraiser. Um, and if you don't have a ticket yet, access for this museum show is a little different than it has been for some of our other shows um, because it's actually coming through your uh, purchase uh, of a ticket by donation or a complimentary ticket through the Eventbrite link. So you will see uh, a link being posted by the amazing Marnie Dangerfield, and that is the link to purchase a ticket to our fundraiser through Eventbrite, and that is there. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I really wanted to reflect back on, um, and with Milagros too, is the power of intentional creativity. We keep coming back to that. That's a big part of our creative conversation. Um, but it's because we really believe in the work of the Intentional Creativity Foundation. That's why we're here. That's why we show up. That's why we co-curate. That's why we build the exhibits and we collaborate and we put in a lot of our personal creative energy into bringing this content forward for our community because we are so moved and so blessed by the experience of intentional creativity in our own lives. So I wanted to just take a moment and kind of throw it back to you, Milagros, and just when you think about your life before intentional creativity and your life after, you know, what has intentional creativity and the intention work of the Intentional Creativity Foundation brought forward in your life? Oh, well, definitely a lot of tea. 
<laughs> I don't have mine with me. A but lot of yes. tea. <laughs> Um, yeah, so tea and cafe with the muse is one of the things that um, intentional creativity has brought for me. Um, presence, presence to who I am and how I show up in the world. Yeah. Um, my story pretty much has been about not quite knowing who I am or what my peace is. And when we speak of peace, um, we refer to the piece of the red thread that connects us all since before we were born and our sacred assignment. And intentional creativity has helped me get a clearer picture of what that is as I spend more time in my heart and give from that space. And um, it's just been really a powerful tool for me to be an active participant in my life where I can witness myself and all that, um, all that living a life as an artist can bring in all modalities as a modality for healing, identity, expression. It's just been awesome. And um, if it weren't for all that growth and all of that wonderful yumminess that I've been co-creating with um, the, you know, the universe, I wouldn't be here today sharing all this wonderful, juicy information with you, Amber, or our community. It's just, it's just a way of life and it, it really feels good to live and not exist. That's right. To live fully. Yeah. That's what creative access does. That's what creative self-expression does. It, what's what it cultivates inside of a person is the ability mm -hmm. to live fully and to live in the beauty of life. I want to read a quote um, that is the why, part of the why of the Intentional Creativity Foundation. And it's Beautiful. It says, our focus on creativity and culture is summoned from the deepest heart within our community to serve the planet and all beings into the future. Our unique part is to steward the contemporary creative and symbolic arts as a part of the story we are telling about who we are as a people at this time. Artists and writers have always been the storytellers of each epoch, shaping how the story is told, what parts and in what way. And for me, that really uh, strikes me personally and how intentional creativity has helped me shape the story I was telling about myself and my own life and the culture that I live inside and create um, really new stories out of the raw materials of my life through creativity, through creative self-expression, through seeing myself at the canvas and in all kinds of creative processes. And not just that, but it's the catalyzation of creative community. So a big part of the work of the Intentional Foundation, Intentional Creativity Foundation, is the cultivation of community. Mm. Communities of artists and creative and folks who want to be together and uplift each other and inspire and catalyze one another. And that is, I think, part of the, the, the magic of what happens in our community and, and in this Red Thread Cafe classroom and in all the projects that the Intentional Creativity Foundation sponsors, which really come down to community care, to healing the world, to being a, a benefit of grace and compassion to a world that is in need of really so much of that, right? Compassion, like we have a world that is in need of compassion and healing. Yes. And so that's such a big part of community and what we cultivate here and what comes through the foundation. And that's what we're gonna be sharing uh, today in our museum show and fundraiser. We're going to be honoring the Intentional Creativity Foundation and all the projects, the philanthropic and community care projects that have been happening. We're gonna sh share some of those and give you just that, that deep reminder of some of the really, really valuable um, projects that are happening behind the scenes sometimes. And also very much maybe some of that you're a part of, but it's all of them in one place that we're going to be sharing uh, in a presentation that um, I feel it was. It will be great for all of us to reconnect with, just to remember that when you're supporting the Intentional Creativity Foundation, when you're donating, when you're purchasing a ticket for the show, or you're donating to our, we have a PayPal donation link as well, which Marnie's going to share. If you can't come to the show, but you would like to just donate, make a one-time donation to the Intentional Creativity Foundation, um, you are really investing and collaborating financially with us in the co-creation of 
these beautiful healing and community care projects that are creating incredible ripples in the world that you can feel and I can feel and they're lighting us up and we want more and more people to be able to access and feel and experience them. Yes, we do. Thank you for letting me share about that. And thank you, Marnie, for sharing the links in the chat. Yes. Yeah. Well, I also, um, Milagros, we were talking before uh, about the museum in particular Mm -hmm. and Gosh, when I was creating the presentation for this fundraiser today, I was looking at all the work the museum has done, the exhibits, the shows, featuring member artists. So if you're a member, many of our members are the ones who have their art featured in the museum, in the exhibits. And a lot of these exhibits that we create, believe it or not, you know, they have Uh, they require a financial investment. Sometimes they're over $5,000 to create one exhibit, believe it or not, because of all of the incredible amount of time and investment that goes into it. And we feature and uplift our artists regardless of that cost, because we know that this work is so important. And we know that you are so important and that you matter as an artist, as a creative, and also that women and particularly women of color and culture are one of the most underrepresented demographics in Mm. the art and museum world. And we want to change that. We want to see that change as a part of our 100 year plan and our legacy. We want to see that transformed so that women take up more space inside of the art world, inside of the influence of art, because art is such a powerful medium of communication. We want women to hold that space of power. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to speak about that too. And I know you've probably, Milagros, you've probably experienced that yourself and seen that, right? When we've done our work together and we've looked at what's really going on for women. Yeah. What do you feel as a, as a woman artist when you think about what our museum is doing and where women are at in general in the art and museum world. Yeah, it's, it's been very impactful. And um, when I've watched the shows, which I want to definitely witness you that you've curated so beautifully with so much heart and how you, you know, you create these events that are going to be seen for years to come, you can feel the love in it. And just the thought that we're creating a container where women who have never, ever even picked up a brush get to actually be in a show and express themselves and put their souls onto a canvas. And that energy, that love, that identity is so, it's just so transparent and transcending. And every show we have brings me to tears. Yeah. You know, it's right. just like get your tissues if you're coming yes. to an exhibit a museum show. It is I'm telling you to be witnessed, you know, and it is just like it's awesome that that you know, I mean myself included, I never imagined myself being in a gallery exhibit, you know, and I've yes, I've done a few community, you know, um collaborative shows when I was in New York and everything and shown my work here um on an art walk in, in San Antonio. But this is just so much deeper, so much realer, so much more tangible and rewarding, Um, you know, to be part of this movement and to be part of the collective as a woman and a woman of color. It's it's part of my healing journey because, you know, going way back, um, you know, when I started my journey as a colored woman, my journey was about healing that. Who am I? And as Shiloh says, who who lives here? And I'm getting more comfortable with going that into that place where that she lives. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think you're so right. There's something about that witness, witness reality where we witness ourselves, we witness each other. When you actually get to express your art out into the world and you can see it as a part of a show on an exhibit page, right? And we're working virtually because we are mega resilient and mega (laughs) adaptive and we are going virtual. We go virtual because that's how we can do it right now. And even in that virtual context, the way that we curate the images and the experience, we weave in the story because that's a really big part of intentional creativity and the foundation, what they stand for is art and story 
being the mediums of communicating uh, the message, communicating the, the beauty, communicating the depth that can come through mm -hmm. art and the artist. So we don't t separate the artist from the art nope. or put them in the background. We bring their personal story, their unique essence, their imprint, and make sure that it's included. And that's a full, that's like a full body witness. Like sometimes you watch these yeah. things and you see these and you really feel like you're seeing this artist, you're seeing this woman, you're really seeing her work and her soul and her story. And that is, there's honestly no greater gift to me than to be able to curate these exhibits because of that, right? It's so important. And um, there is a really fascinating little YouTube video that we're gonna share with you right now that is part of a campaign that, um, is really bringing light to the fact that still many people in our world can't name five female artists. You know, you, probably in our community we can, because I could name pretty much any one of you, and that would be true. You're you're an artist, and I know you, and I know you're a woman. <laughs> and of course, we also in our museum we are also honoring art of men and art of anyone on the gender continuum. So there's this uh, incredible um, expansiveness to how we are working as well. But we have a stand particularly at this time and in our matriarchal lineage that brought us here to really hold a space for women because that space is still underrepresented. So this campaign is called Name Five Female Women Artists. And we wanted to show it to you because it will give you a little insight on why this work is so important. Okay, I'm gonna go, you're so, gonna share your screen? Yeah, I'm gonna share it. I'm gonna pull it up here. Bear with me just for one moment, you all, and we'll get it. We'll get it going. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna pull it off, Milagros. We got this. I got this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Share screen. Is it gonna let me choose? Yep. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. Okay, share. Can you all see that? Can you see it, Milagros? Yes, I see it. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to go into full screen and press play. All right. Here we go. All right. So that was from the National Museum of Women and the Arts. And we are very much aligned with them as an organization, as you can imagine, because we're standing for the same thing. Um, but it's an interesting thing to think about that it's true. So many people have a hard time naming five women artists. And we thought it would be fun today to do a little bit of art history trivia on our live call, just for the next five minutes or so, where Milagros and I are gonna pick um, a few trivia 
questions to ask you about some women artists and see if you can answer in the chat if you know the answer. It's okay if you need to use Google, you're allowed to do that, but just note whether or not the answer comes readily to mind. So Milagros, do you wanna start us off with the first question? Sure, okay. So known as a master of self-portraits, she became a painter after surviving a near fatal car accident. Who might Who that she? be? Da 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 And the answer is Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. There you go. All right. Yes, we have someone who has it there. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Many think of her as having been a recluse in her home in Santa Fe during her later years, but she was actually surrounded by a team of young interns wanting to learn from the quote, mother of American modernism, as she has often been recognized. Oh, who's that? Any guesses? Any guesses? Watching the chat, seconds. any guesses? Three, two, one. And that is Georgia. Georgia O'Keefe. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. This famous American folk artist did not begin painting in earnest until she was 78 years old. Who was she? I wish we had some awesome boogie music. <laughs> <laughs> Who was she, Milagros? Grandma Moses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Not given the recognition she deserved during her time, this Swedish painter is now recognized as a preeminent pioneer of abstract art. Her abstract compositions were completed years before those of. Wassily Kandinsky, one of her contemporaries. Oh, this one's a good one. Okay. And 30 seconds. You can't give them that much. Not that gotta much. Be, they got to move quick here. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So that one, you all, that's Hilma Af Clint. All right. And I'm wondering. If we want to, Milagros, move to some of the artists from within our own community and the trivia there. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. This artist and international creativity elder had solo show at Musea in Intentional Creativity Museum in May of 2021 with the highest attention, I'm sorry, the highest attendance of any museum show we've had. And she also coined the term colorlicious. Who is she? <laughs> Who coined the term colorlicious? Come on, guys. I know you know this one. <laughs> no, no takers, no biters. Who was it, Milagros? Our very own Phyllis and ah, Taylor. There you go. Marnie Taylor got Pennett. it. Marnie got it. Yay, Marnie. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Mm. She is a hot mess who eats lightning for breakfast on a feast table of love and recently broke up with Pat Riarchy. Who could hmm. that be? Hmm. <laughs> well, of course. Are you going to tell is... us? Yeah, I don't know. Should we keep them guessing on that one? Keep them guessing. Yeah, let's keep them guessing. We'll come back. Yay, Marnie. <laughs> Marnie's like, spoiler alert. <laughs> Yes, I'm Maestra Shiloh Sophia and curator of Musea Museum. Um, okay. This artist and intentional creativity elder was born in Haiti and like Neo of the Matrix, she speaks the language of symbols. 
but of her ancestral language of Kemet and focuses on hearing what is not said. Who is she? Hmm. Come on. Manamana. Manamana. Come on. That one's one of my favorites. And who is that, Malagos? Our beautiful elder Semarit Strachan. Mm-hmm. Marva got it. Marva, Marva got, it. got it. Hey, Marva. <laughs> okay, we're going to do one more. So this beloved intentional creativity elder and ancestor in 2016 smudged the 193 flags of the United Nations during the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, asking for an apology for the native peoples of this territory called the United States. Which intentional creativity artist and elder was that? Come on. Your heart knows. Yes, yes. Carmen, spirit warrior, Baraka, yes. honoring our ancestors. Yes. Love this. Mm. This is so fun to do because even posing these kind of trivia questions really makes you realize some of the incredible legendary women that and art, the legendary women artists mm -hmm. that are moving and shaking and creating through intentional creativity in this community and who we are representing and who we are holding and who the Intentional Creativity Foundation is all about uplifting. So mm -hmm. we are just so grateful that you'll play along with us. Thanks for playing. Thank you for playing. So we're getting close to uh, 3.30 here. Um, we did want to let you know that the fundraiser, the museum show happening today at 4 p.m. Pacific time is truly a place for celebration and fun. We have woven in some uh, really great, creative, energetic, playful elements. And uh, one of them is something Milagros created that I just wanted her to introduce to you all to give you a little taste of what's coming with her Muse Moves wheel. What's yes. that all about, Milagros? What's behind you? Well, this, um, my Muse decided that, you know, we wanted to play. So in alignment with our creative conversations, I sat with it and this is my way of uh doing that helping to uh cultivate um creative conversations with the universe so this is a game that we're going to be playing we'll be spinning the wheel and the muse will tell us what move we need to add to our pages as we do our abstract paintings and um i'm just doing that to you know to to play just to bring awareness and coherence in all our systems we'll be exploring the energy of our hearts, our field, our body, our minds, and we have themes here. And then wherever the brush point lands, we're going to follow our brush and we're going to do the move that the muse is inspiring us to do. So I look forward to all of us having fun with that. <laughs> yeah, that's so wonderful, Milagros, the fact that you that you designed that and came up with that. I honestly think you should do a whole class for us on how to make those for our beloveds and for yes. our community and for our kids. <laughs> you know, if we're teachers, like they're just so wonderful. So that's part of what we have in store is creativity. We've got live music. We're going to have a live song from Juniper Manilis and also from myself. And we are going to have sharing from our founders and in intentional creativity founders, Shiloh and Jonathan McLeod, who are going to be there to share their hearts with us. We're going to have sharing from our membership circle leaders. So that's those amazing individuals who have been holding our circles over the last year, which is a part of our museum programming, part of our membership. They're all going to share a little bit about reflecting on the year and what they're envisioning for 2022. 
we're going to give you a sneak peek of our museum calendar for 22 and also like i said share with you the good good work the intentional creativity foundation has been doing is doing and will continue, will continue. to do with all of our co-creation and collaboration and support so thank you everyone so much for being here. Yes. Marnie has so graciously posted in the chat a link to join us for the fundraiser at 4 p.m. That's in about half an hour. If you haven't already yet got a ticket. Get your and tickets, get your tickets. That's right. The tickets <laughs> are by donation and there is a complimentary option as well. We want everyone to be able to come. If you don't have the finances to donate to Nate, just come and bring your presence because yes. that is uh, your contribution and that is what we cherish as well. Mm -hmm. We are really looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, I think Marnie has also posted in the link uh, in the chat, a link to our intentional creativity PayPal donation page. If anyone would like to make a one-time donation to the foundation and is not able to come today to the show, you're welcome to follow that link and donate that way. So we are just so grateful. Great yes, for presence. Thank you so much. Yes. Great for this chance to have fun. Thank you, Milagros, for Thanks letting for me join us. Yes. I love <laughs> it. I always love being in space with you, sister. I love everything we do together for our community, with our community. And I'm looking forward to our next act in half an hour. That's right. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of fun and we're just celebrating something that is really near and dear to mm -hmm. our lives. Yes. And this good work, like I said, that we want to see continue for many, many years to come. Yes. Yeah. So we hope that we've impacted, impressed, and inspired you to show up, be with us, celebrate, witness us, witness yourself, and be the creatives that you were meant and born to be. That's right. With that, we'll say goodbye. Bye, everyone. See you at the show. Hope to see you at the show. <laughs>